Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Today's episode, Brief Interviews with Confused Men, the best of Season 3. You consider yourself a spiritual person. Yeah, deeply. Were you always spiritual? Well, I have a spirit. Mm-hmm. And you have a spirit. I mean, everybody has a spirit. Mm-hmm. I guess it's just how connected you are to that spirit. And I'm joined at the hip with my spirit. We're really tight. That's how I feel. Okay, I've prepared for you um, some questions, spiritual questions that I was hoping you could answer. Okay? Okay, sure. And um, we're going to try to get through as many as we can, as quickly as we can. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, let's just cue up the music. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. And, very, and, very, and, game, very game showy. Yeah. Um, all right, so here we go. Your first question. You all set? Yeah. Which weighs more, an angel or a beam of light? A beam of light. Next. All right, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is basically... Next. Who does God love more, flowers or rainbows? Next. It's just flowers or rainbows. Flowers. Which does Satan love more? Flowers. Which does Satan hate more? Flowers. If you were going to fight Satan, would you use kickboxing, kung fu, or taekwondo? I'd use a variety of different styles, plus grappling and jujitsu. If you just had to choose one? I mean, all three of those would be completely ineffective against Satan. I think anybody would know if that. If you just had to choose one? That's just an ignorant question. I, we need to fight the okay, devil. Okay, let's move on. Why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, more often than not, they deserve it, and they're not so good, despite what people say. Next. Does free will exist? Yes. How do you know? Jumper cable, bandana, maple syrup, video game, mafia, broomstick. That's, that's free will right there. Okay. If angels play harps, what do demons play? Demons, I think a French horn's a very difficult instrument. They say it's the most difficult wind instrument. I have to say the French horn. Does everyone deserve a happy ending? No, absolutely not. Some people just need to go out in flames. Like? Kamikaze pilots, professional wrestlers, gangsters, daredevils. Klingons, Klingon doesn't want to go, out, you know, you know, have a happy ending. Klingon wants to go and go out with honor. Kerpla. Kerpla. Get yourself a Klingon dictionary. Next. What is the worst deed a man can commit? Leaving food on his plate. Complete this sentence. Because the world is round. Mm-hmm. Complete it. The world is round. Complete it. No, no. Because the world is round. Dot. 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 Mm-hmm. Complete that sentence. What sentence are we talking about here? Because the world is round. Yeah. That's the sentence that you're supposed to... Do. Okay, forget. Let's skip that one. How do you keep from thinking about elephants? Think about mice, and they won't answer your thoughts. Can only God make a tree? Mm, yeah, no. Okay, the lightning round is over. All right. We're going to move on to the final Jeopardy portion okay. of the questioning, okay? Right. Here we go. If you had one minute of God's time, okay, just one minute, All right. what would you ask him? Now, here's the clock. Uh, what would I ask him? I mean, I'd ask him, you know, I mean, why do clouds look like things? That's, that'd be my number one question, you know. Five seconds. Like dead bunny rabbits upside down, you know, from a hunter's rack. 20 seconds. Agonizing looks on their faces. Why, why Why? do clouds look like that most of the time? That's, that's what I'd ask him. Okay, you got 35 seconds left. Um, that's basically it, just the cloud thing, and whether they look like, like bunny rabbits hanging upside down. Yeah, you've still got about a half a minute, Howard. <clears throat> um, I guess I'd ask him, you know, like how he's doing, and... You've got 20 more seconds. <clears throat> Oh, oh uh, I've always wanted to, you know, I mean, why, why why can't we graze like cows? Like, you're hungry, you go into the neighbor's yard, you eat some lawn, you know, and that's something I've always wondered. Why why can't humans graze? And okay, and your minute's up. Okay, that's pretty good. I, I feel good about that one. All right, well, the, the, uh, the, well, that's, um, I guess that concludes it. Thanks for participating. Well, but you're kind of forgetting a little something, I think. You know, I've been at the game show. You know, thank you for participating. Here's some complimentary... Parting gifts, some kind of like life supply, like macaroni or something. Or okay, well, I don't know. Oh, come by the office. I'll give you uh, some mugs or something. I don't know. I got some magazines. You want some magazines? 
Well, I mean, I was kind of thinking of like I don't know, like a, a watch or something, or a I don't have any snowboard or I don't have anything like that, Howard. It's not a real game show. Well, well, look, you know, all right, fine, you know, enlighten you know the Canadian public. I mean, that's that's something, right? See that, that there you go. So I'll, I'll I'll speak to you later on that. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, John. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll take the magazine. Okay. All right. Okay, how? All right, John. Take care. Now. Bye. 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 Louis Flower Shop. This is Louis. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Jonathan Goldstein. When when I was uh, living in Brooklyn, I used to live just down the street from your from your flower shop. I, I don't know if you remember me. No, I wouldn't remember you. I got so many customers. I'm gonna remember. I would come in each Sunday and I'd buy a single sunflower for my girlfriend. You know how many people come into my shop? So you well, know. anyway, you know we be, we maintained our friendship after we broke up. So what's that got to do with me? Right, and recently it's it's you know it's sort of fallen into disrepair a little bit. Well, that's sad, but uh, you know I'm I'm really busy right now. I don't need your uh, pedigree, and I don't mm-hmm. have to hear your life story. So you could you know, what do you want? Well, this is where you come in. You know, I sort of wanted to take a trip down Mary Lane and you know send her um, flowers from Louis Flower Shop. Yeah. But I'd also like to uh, attach a little poem that was very uh, dear to our hearts. A poem? Yeah, that I was I was hoping that maybe you can include with the flowers, uh, that maybe I could recite you over the telephone. Read it over the phone. Yeah. All right, wait a second. I've got to find a pen, all right? Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Hold on. All right. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Il pleure dans mon cœur. What? What's that? It, it's it's a French poem. It's um it's uh, French. It, yeah. It's How am I going to do a French poem? I never spoke a word of French in my life. Well, maybe we could just do it phonetically. I'll go very slowly. Il pleure dans mon cœur. Il il what? Pleure. Il pleure. Ple, no, pleure dans mon cœur. Pleure dans mon cœur. Okay. Comme il pleut sur la ville. A uh, ca- camel camel. No, uh, come come. Come, it come. means it rains in my heart as it rains in the city. Okay. Go ahead. Au bruit du... Oh, What's that? What's that? Au bruit. Au bruit. No, no, bruit. I got a business to run. I can't sit here and write something, uh, uh, a French poem. Well, I, I'm sorry. We'll, I'm a we'll one-man speak. operation. I understand. I my pre- phones are ringing. How long is this well, bloody thing going to be? Yeah, no, no. It's, 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 it, 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 we're, we're doing pretty good. It's not It's not much longer. Just uh, Not much longer? I'm getting right as cramp from this already. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, a new stanza. You ready? Another stanza. One more. Yeah. Okay. One more. Is this the last stanza? It's, uh, it's the it's the penultimate stanza. The penultimate stanza. Yeah. Whatever the hell that means. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. Il pleure sans raison. Il pleure sans raison. Okay. 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 Par terre et sur les toits. Pat. Pat. Par terre. Par terre. Par terre. Par terre. Et sur les toits. Sur les toits. Yeah. Dans ce cœur qui s'écoeure. Dans soccer. Yeah, no, ce, ce cœur. Dans ce cœur. Yeah, okay. qui s'écoeure. Qui soccer. Sick soccer. All right, next stanza. I, I thought you said this was the last stanza. Well, I said, no, I said it was the penultimate. This is the... Well, what is penultimate well, it means mean? the second to last. Second to... This is... Yeah. Uh, uh, is this the last? Yeah, this is the last one. Here we go. You ready? Sans amour et sans haine. Sans amour et sans N. Okay. Mon, N. Okay. Mon cœur a tant de peine. Mon cœur. 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 Yeah. Okay. A tant de peine. A tant de peine. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now give it back to me. What do you mean give it back to you? I could just uh, about write it down. I'm going to give it back to you now? Well, Is this some sort of joke? No, wait, let me let me. I'll give you the address. Um, yeah, I hope it's not in French too. No, no, it, no. It's uh, fifty-three. Yeah. Prince Street. Fifty-three Prince Street. Yeah, okay. and it's 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 okay, and it's from Jonathan. From Jonathan. To Joanne. To Joanne. And uh, and 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 so you'll attach that to a single sunflower. You can only send one single sunflower. 
with all this French poetry. Well, I mean, this is the tradition that Joanne and I had established. Well, I should get a bushel of roses to this. No, I, I hear what you're saying. It was sort of, you know, well, it was hold just on. like... Listen, not those petunias. It, no, the other ones. Uh, yeah, those are the ones. Listen, I got a petunia situation here. I got to go. Hello? Hey, Joanne. Mm-hmm. Hey, Hi. Um, so you, you got the, did you, did you get the sunflower? I did. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, I just, I, you know, I, I felt kind of badly, you know, I felt like we sort of left off on a bad note and. It was very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. it you know, I feel like, you know, we should be able to part and. You You're know, right. Kind of similar. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. And did you, did you uh, get the, the, the poem with it? The poem? Oh my God. You know what? Yes, it was completely incomprehensible. No. On, I couldn't even read it. In, in fact, it was written on the back of a napkin. It was like a, a dirty used napkin. Re- like re- from Subway? Right. Well, okay. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoy the uh, the sunflower. I did, yeah. You know, I just sort of wanted to extend the um, the olive branch and... Um... Hello? Hello? Hi. Sorry. I, I what just, was that? At the volume. I was just trying to, uh-huh. to lower your volume. Tommy got me this new phone, and uh, anyway, I can't figure it out. Sorry. Yeah, in- enjoy the sunflower. Um, Great. You know, um, may it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, you know, good talking. Um, Hang on one sec. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, John. Yeah. I really have to go. Um, I, all right. Well, um, you know, if you're in um, if you're if you're in Montreal, give me a yeah. call. Okay. It would be it would be nice to hang out. Um, and yeah. you know, with with Tommy as well. Okay. It was it was good talking okay. to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you too. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Oh, oh God! So I can't believe it. Who's that? Jo- Joanne. Jonathan Goldstein. What does he want? You, uh, you didn't hang up there. You really don't want to know. He wanted to read me this poem, and uh, it's just really stupid. It's, it's really stupid. Anyway, can you pour me some of that? Yeah, hold on. Thanks. Oh, it's good. It's stupid. Um, yeah, so he sent me a flower. That, that sunflower. He sent me one sunflower. <laughs> Tommy, come on. Very funny. Before he ever moved to Gotham City, before he grew into the overweight, obsessive sad sack of his later years, the Penguin was a poet and a dandy who lived in London. He wrote complex villanelles and threw lavish dinner parties at which he only became more charming the more he drank. He wore a monocle, a top hat, and carried an umbrella. One evening, at one of his dinner parties, after hours spent sipping absinthe, the Penguin ran up to the roof of his building opened up his large black umbrella and leapt off into the air. As he coasted to the ground, he hollered out lines from Blake, stuff about grabbing life by the fat of its stomach and giving it a twist. He was that crazy. He was that bursting with life. From that night on, he made it his habit to jump off roofs ever higher while clutching an umbrella. After a while, he got pretty good at it, too. He saw that by kicking his legs and twisting his back a certain way, He could actually prolong his flight, coasting all over the place, sometimes only landing after several daring minutes aloft. It came to pass that the penguin started hearing more and more about a certain nanny named Mary Poppins. She too, he was told, had been floating around London hanging from an umbrella handle. Everywhere he went, the penguin kept hearing about her, how it was simply insane that they had not met each other yet. So finally, a dinner party was arranged by someone who knew them both, and on the evening of the party, the penguin walked into the drawing room, saw Mary Poppins on the divan, doffed his top hat, and bowed low, as was his style in those days. He'd planned a few things to say and do when first meeting Mary Poppins, 
He thought he might lift up his umbrella as though challenging her to a duel. He imagined she would smile and take up her own frilly, perhaps pink umbrella, and then together they would dance about the room, leaping over furniture, parrying and thrusting, perhaps even winding things up, breathing heavily nose to nose. Instead, what happened was the penguin became very shy and quiet. As he stood there staring at her, his top hat felt needlessly clumsy. His monocle, too small for his face, and the squinting needed to keep it in place, was giving him a slight headache. For the first time in his life, the penguin felt ludicrous. I imagine you two must have an infinite amount of things to speak of," said their host as he sat them together at the dinner table. The penguin nodded uncertainly. After three or four minutes, it became clear that the penguin and Mary Poppins had absolutely nothing to say to one another that did not deal exclusively with umbrella travel, getting stuck in trees, the shoulder aches, anxiety about tipping over in the wind. Everyone at the table just sat there staring at them expectantly, which made the whole thing even more awkward. Trying to move things along, Mary Poppins asked the penguin if he liked to sing, to which the penguin responded, "Only when I'm drunk." Then she asked if he enjoyed children, to which he replied, "Yes, in a sweet wine sauce." The penguin then asked Mary Poppins how she kept people from looking up her skirt when she flew. She smiled politely, then turned to the man on her left and asked him how he was enjoying the lamb. The man on her left was wearing an elegant aristocratic cape. Mary, a bit drunk on the sherry, noted that if he spread his cape out, he might be able to glide about like a bat. The man on her left chuckled and suggested that after dinner they head up to the roof and give it a try, which they did. Hello. Hey, Josh. Who the hell is this? It's Jonathan. What what's going on with your voice? Nothing. Please, you sound like you're in a funk band from the early '80s. All right, it's been my voice has been digitally altered through the soundboard. It's been tweaked through EQ to give me five dBs more bass or something. Uh, please, okay, you don't even know what that means. You can't even spell EQ. What what is the deal? My my radio program was presented to a test audience some time ago to get some market feedback, and evidently.、Uh, The, the, the words、uh, "whiny" and "nasal" came up a lot, so the、uh, the network brass came up with this、uh, idea that you know maybe my voice could you know just be lowered a little bit and and, and tweaked. So I'm tempted to say that anything that makes your voice less whiny and nasal is by definition a good thing, but you sound like Stephen Hawking channeling Gordon Lightfoot. Thank you. Just, you sound somewhat like a helper monkey. Get used to it. All right. Take take the effect. Box off your voice. I can have a normal conversation with you. It's a part of the microphone apparatus. Well, why don't you just put the microphone down for once in your life? I don't find it that intrusive. Okay, I'm used to it already. Of course, you don't find it that intrusive. It's like living in a hideous building. You don't see the building because you're looking out. But I'm looking at the building and I'm liking what I'm seeing. Take it off. Look, I'm, I mean, I'm not nuts about it, but I'm trying to get used to it. And according to the test audiences, it makes my voice sound more authoritative. You see, normally if I if I do a monologue about all my troubles and stuff like that, I end up sounding like Gilbert Gottfried. But with this thing, you know, I sound more like like Miles Davis or something. So it, it makes the whole thing, you know, thirty to thirty five percent sexier. I think I'm now thirty percent more nauseated. I mean, let's you know, let's talk like men here. You were always kind of boring, but now you're boring and aggravating. I think I might like it actually. You might like it. I think I, I'm. I think I'm getting used to it. Who cares what you like? It has it. advantages. You're talking to people. It's people. Is it people respect the voice? Because in the mean streets where you live, it's all about respect for you, John. I mean, you, you, keep in mind, right? This. I don't understand what, what, how you think this is going to work. What this, do you mean? This effect that you put on your voice only works when you're in the studio on the mic. Well, how is it going to work? It's, it, all this is going to do is encourage you to, to, to remove yourself even more from the real world and stay in your little hermetically sealed kingdom there. And not even venture out and talk to people one on one. Is this a healthy thing? Not a healthy thing. Well, I, I like it in here. Not a healthy thing. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have your underlings wheel you around in a mobile house studio. I mean, I, I mean, is that your little fantasy? You know, you got your little hookup. You don't look at me. I'm so fucking respectful. 
know. You, you know something? I've got I've got um, I've got EQs on this soundboard that would actually be able to alter your voice. Also, you know that? Does it, does that appeal to you? No, not really. Because no. you know I hold in, in you know I hold the power. Oh, very impressive. Oh, very yeah. Impressive. It, it, well, it it's is almost impressive. Almost like you're in complete control. It's not almost. Can, I am. You control everything. I mean, there's a fiction that everybody else is an independent actor responsible for their own actions, but. What are you doing? I, what do you think? It's, it's, I, I, you have sunk, I, I, I don't, you know, what, how, what am I supposed to say to this? It's pathetic, it's pathetic. I like it, I think it's cute. You it sound cute. cute. It you, is not cute, it is not cute, it is, it is what an infant would do if an infant had the technological capacity. I think it makes you a lot more likable. Just give me back my normal voice, okay? I'm not, I'm, I like this. Shameful, shame! I mean, I think, I think sort of like with the way I sound and the way you sound, you know, it's sort of like I, I feel like a big lumberjack with a cuddly little titmouse on my lap. What? A titmouse? Yeah, you, you are a degenerate, okay? You have no authentic humanity left. You're pathetic. You have no shame. You have no, you don't even understand what it's like to be a human being anymore. Oh, I made a titmouse on your lap. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm going to claw your eyes out. If you were here right now, I would, I would, I would school you. I would show you what a real human being Maybe you should get yourself a co-host, someone young, someone who can give like a snow and ski report. Maybe weather on the ones, traffic and transit. You know what I'm talking about, snowboard. Have you ever even listened to my show before? Honest answer? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I've listened, well, I've, I've tried to, I've never actually listened to it. I've tried to listen. I'm not, you see, I knew, I knew this about you. So where do you, where do you come off giving me advice on, on, on something that you've never even listened to? Because I use myself as a focus group. I think, what would make me want to listen to this? But how do you know you don't want to listen to it if you've never listened to it? The proof that your show is not something I want to listen to is that I've never listened to it. But you don't even know that it's unlistenable. How can you say it's listenable when I can't listen to it? The fact that I haven't listened to your show is proof that your show is unlistenable too. If I could listen to your show, it wouldn't be unlistenable. But I can't. So it is. Make your show listenable too by me. Mm -hmm. I am right in the sweet spot. I am the demo that you want. I am your ideal customer. Mm -hmm. And I am not interested in listening to your show, the radio. Why don't you start a telegraph show? You could really connect with those people in dusty outposts who are waiting for the Pony Express to come. Why don't you write down all your witty remarks, roll them up on a piece of paper, and send them out on carrier pigeons? And all those lucky scoundrels who have coops on their roof could really enjoy your wit and wisdom. That's very funny. Listen, I'm doing fine. The future just called. Give me. And you didn't get the voicemail because you don't even have voicemail. You have one of those gigantic enamel old rotary phones. Listen, let me level with you. I'm rich. Mm -hmm. Normally, I deal with things like numbers that have a lot of zeros after them, like nine zeros after them. Mm -hmm. I don't deal with things like radio. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you one for free, okay? Mm -hmm. I call it Debater's Corner. Oh, yeah? Hey, look. Let's just try it. Okay. Try it. Once, once back and forth. All right. You start. Any issue of the day, you just bring up one. Uh, all right. I don't know. The, 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 the price of gas is, is, is really going through the roof. Yeah, for someone old like you... What are you talking about? The price of gas is the price of gas, regardless of whether you're young or old, right? I know you are, but what am I? I don't care about the price of gas. I ride a motorcycle. Yeah, but I race around on my motorcycle, right. my main man. Okay, Greggy, uh, motorcycles take gas also. Jealous much? What? I don't. What? What are you talking? Ever about? ride what a Segway? That? It's electric. Doesn't need any gas. Old people like you are all lined up at the gas station this morning. I went shooting straight by him on my electric Segway from the future with a gyroscope. It was amazing. I was stoked, dude. Did your pacemaker run on gasoline? Do you have to put a lot of liters of gas in it? It's, or do you still feed it coal? Okay, or is I, it a wood-burning pacemaker? I don't have a pacemaker. Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm out surfing in my bodysuit made of neoprene. Okay, I, it's, it's not just debates that we could do. We could do stuff like, imagine if there were regular segments. Like, um, mm -hmm. like, how about if we had a segment called You're Old, I'm Young? Like, go ahead. You can start it off. Say something that makes you sound like you're old. You know something, Kicker? You're, 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 you're starting to make my head hurt. That's good. All right, let's try it like that. Your head hurts? I could come back with something like this. What's your head hurt from, old man? Being too old? See, my generation... We don't care about anything. You know what we like to do? 
What's listen that? to our iPods. Mm -hmm. We listen to MP4s. What are you still listening to, an MP3? Loser. Hey, check me out. I'm on MySpace. I have 170,000 friends on MySpace. How many friends do you have? Four in the old age home. Why don't you go for a walk with them, old man? My generation, we don't walk. We're obese. Your generation didn't have an obesity problem, right? There wasn't enough to eat. You had to finish what's on your plate. My generation, we are fat. T-H-A-T as well as F-A-T. Hey, you know what my generation likes to do? What's that? Have tons of sex that you wish you had when you were younger. That's, I don't... Is that driving you crazy yet, old man? Okay, I... Sorry, dude. Got to take off on my skateboard now. Hang out with my friends. Have some fun. What in your World War II generation, you couldn't afford to have fun, right? Right. What'd you do, grow vegetables in your victory garden? Yeah. You know where my vegetables come from, old man? What's that? The supermarket. And I don't even pay for them. I put them on my debit card. Loser. What are you talking about? Hey, surf's up, old man. My friend just texted me on my two-way pager SMS because I'm young. Young, young, young. You're so old, you don't even know what the word young means anymore. Yeah. I still sleep in my crib with my onesie because I'm so young. When I say young, what do you think of old, balding Neil Young? Yeah. You're so old, you don't even know what the word young means anymore. Right. I'm young up the yin-yang. Yeah. You're stuck eating egg foo young, which, by the way, people don't even eat anymore because it's full of cholesterol. But young people, they eat other stuff like sushi. Wait a minute, are you getting any of this? Or did you go down for your nap time, old mobile? On Wiretap today, you heard Howard Chakowitz, Buzz Goldstein, Mary claude Pallet, Michael Weisel, Joshua Carpati, and Gregor Ehrlich. Special thanks to Alex Bloomberg. Wiretap is produced by Jonathan Goldstein, with Mira Bertwintonic, Wendy Dore, and Carolyn Warren. Tune into Wiretap Sunday at 1, 4 Pacific Time, and 1.30 in Newfoundland. You can also hear Wiretap across North America on Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Reach us through our website at cbc.ca slash wiretap. <laughs>